Now that the first GCSE maths paper has finished, we have some sort of idea of the topics that may appear in papers two and three. So I thought it'd be a good idea today to list some of those topics that have appeared in paper one based on feedback that we've had from our students. And then I'll talk about the potential paper two and three topics. Some of the topics that have appeared in paper one were quadratic inequalities, indices, thirds, proportion, straight lines, so I believe perpendicular, parallel lines, and circle theorems. Like I said, this is just some of the topics that have come up in paper one. So in paper two now, remember that these aren't definite guarantees. This is just my, my expectations. So one is vectors and geometric proof. So, you know, proving something is a straight line, proving that some points are collinear, or working out some sort of ratio from a, a geometrical, from a geometric vectors question. Algebraic fractions, there's a very good chance that there will be an algebraic fractions question. We also have a video on an algebraic fractions past question, so link somewhere up here. Similar shapes and scale factors, I would expect a question on that. Um, upper and lower bounds, I would expect a question on upper and lower bounds. Um, in particular, practice those four or five marker questions where you know, you're given some sort of formula and you're asked to work out the value of whatever the, the subject of that formula is to a suitable degree of accuracy. In terms of graph questions, you could be asked questions on histograms, you could be asked questions on cumulative frequency graphs, on speed time graphs, distance time graphs, velocity time graphs. Make sure you know how to estimate gradients. So remember on a, on a distance time graph, the gradient at a particular point represents the speed and on a velocity time graph, the gradient at a particular point represents acceleration. Make sure that you also remember that the area underneath a velocity time graph represents the distance traveled. Make sure you also go through sine and cosine rule, um, other formulas for working out the area of a triangle. So in particular, where you have two sides and an angle in between, you can use that half AB sine C formula. Iteration, make sure you practice some iteration questions and make sure you practice some compound interest questions because there's always some sort of compound interest or percentage change question and in particular repeated percentage change. Uh, lastly, I would also say have a look through transformations and constructions. So, you know, things like loci, bearing, and also just transformations of graphs. Remember, just because a topic has come up in paper one, it doesn't mean that it cannot come up in paper two or paper three in some other form. So, for example, there was a question on quadratic inequalities in paper one. That doesn't mean that you can't get another question on quadratic equations or expressions or even quadratic graphs and recognizing the recognizing and identifying different points on a quadratic graph. There was also a question on probability trees, I believe, in the first paper. But you may also see a question in paper two or paper three on probability and algebra. Right? For, so for example, where you're actually told what the probability of a specific thing is and asked to go back and work out maybe the starting number of something. So once again, just because something has come up in paper one, it does not exclude it from coming up in papers two and three. So those were some of my predictions for papers two and three. I hope you found paper one went well. Good luck for paper two and paper three. If you found this video useful, you can watch some more of our videos here, here and here. Oh, and um, hmm, you can subscribe too.